was going to try to make some homemade yogurt with some powdered milk, but it failed. <laughs> so I stopped and got a gallon of some organic milk and I'm going to make it the old fashioned way that I know how in my Instapot with my yogurt button here. So first I'm heating this milk up to 180 degrees and then I will cool it down to 118 degrees and then I will add my yogurt starter which I just got some plain organic yogurt because I don't have any started and then I will push my mix that in there with some of this milk then I will push my yogurt button for 48 hours and voila I will have yogurt <laughs> so that's what we're doing I will show you then I can take that way make my applesauce and then I can take the core and make apple cider vinegar which I will show you on a video but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a review that my powdered milk yogurt that I tried to make my homemade starter with lemon juice did not work and so I'm going back to the way I know how to make it all right so I will show you when it's done have a great day hi there welcome back so here is my yogurt in my instapot you see it has some whey in there so what i do next is i take my glass bowl here i take a strainer and i put some coffee filters and then i'm going to strain the whey out i usually have to do this in a couple batches um, and then what i do is i take the whey and I put it in a glass jar and I save it in the fridge because it's full of nutrients. And I'm going to use the whey and I'm going to make some fermented applesauce. So, and then I'll take the cores and use some whey and make some homemade apple cider vinegar. So I will show you how I do that. But right now I'm going to strain this yogurt. And what it will do is it will make it, it's pretty thick now. You can see it's pretty jiggly but it will make it super thick and then it will become plain Greek yogurt. And then I eat a little bit each day to have, cause I'm trying to have fermented food with each meal. So I'll have a little bit, uh, sometimes I put a little organic um, granola in there. Sometimes I put just some berries. Sometimes I put a little um, maple syrup or some honey. So whatever, yeah, so this is, what I do, and then I will always save a little bit, so when I make my next batch, I won't have to buy some more organic yogurt, I'll just use this. So that is how I make my homemade yogurt. I do it in the Instapot. There are recipes to do it um, without an Instapot. You can do it on the counter or in a oven with the light on, but I did try that with the powdered milk. <laughs> it did not work for me. So I just didn't want to waste anymore. I really think that it probably is because I tried to make my own yogurt starter with powdered milk and lemon juice. And they say really to do that, you should use a whole lemon or a whole lime, or you can use some peppers. But honestly, I'm just trying to not waste. And I like to do it with my Instant Pot that has a little yogurt on there and then this sat for about 22 and a half hours on the incubation period so now i will just strain it for a while and then show you how that looks thanks so much see you in a bit so here i have it straining i do it in my sink just because when i pour it we all know how clean i can be so this is half of it and i'm just gonna let it sit here and strain for Oh, a good hour or so, and then take some of that whey out, stick it in a jar, and go ahead and make my fermented applesauce. So I will show you how I do that. See you soon. Hello, welcome back to my humble homestead and garden side chat. So while my yogurt is straining to get my whey out of there, I thought I would start um, the process of my applesauce. So I've washed these apples. And what I do is 
I had a couple that has the little brown spots on them, and so I cut those off, threw them in my bucket to compost, because I don't want to put any spots in there that would be bad. And then the rest, like either the cores or the little spots, I'm just throwing in a bag, because I'm going to use this over here to make my apple cider vinegar. And just any little bits, um, I do kind of take the seeds out. You can leave the seeds in and you know strain it if you want. But if I if the seed falls out, I'll just take it out. And then what I do is I just chop up. I don't take the skins off. A lot of people uh, peel them and core them, but I I find that there's plenty of nutrition in the skin, and I chop them up small enough. And then I just put them in my blender. Um, you can use a blender processor, whatever works for you. And I just throw them in there. And I, I don't know how many, I'm really bad at measurements because I don't measure anything. Then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the whey. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of my pink Himalayan sea salt. I will add probably about a tablespoon of um, pure maple syrup. You can add honey if you want to, but I just like mine a little bit sweet. And then I add probably about a good teaspoon or so of honey. I don't, like I said, I don't measure. Some people like nutmeg in theirs. I'm not putting nutmeg in mine. And then I'll blend this up and I'll put it in a canning jar. I'll put a coffee filter over it with a rubber binder and then I'll let it, um, you wanna leave a good inch at the top because of the fermentation process, it will bubble. And then you wanna leave it out on your counter for a good, you know, maybe like three days kind of check it. Um, you don't want to keep it out too long. If you leave it out a long time, then it starts turning to alcohol because you know the sugars and the fruit turn to alcohol. So about three days and then I keep it in the refrigerator and it will be good in the refrigerator for about a month. So then I'll eat a couple tablespoons of this a day with one of my meals. So I'll have the yogurt as a fermented food. I still have a couple green beans left. They're almost gone, but I did buy some more green beans. And I have some cabbage. So I like to have a little bit of a variety. And the one thing that's really good is when you keep this in the fridge, it does ferment super slowly, so it does last a while. Um, but it does last, you know, quite a long time. The applesauce, not quite as long like the, I mean, it does last quite a long time actually, but um, I usually don't keep because of fruit quite as long because I don't want to chance it to turn into alcohol. So, I mean, even though it is fermenting still, I usually try to eat the fruit of, up probably in a month. But the um, cabbage and uh, the vegetables and stuff, they're good for, gosh, a long, long time. So I do have some carrots in there that I'm going to use up, but now that I got that Dutch oven, I am going to try to uh, make some beef stew. So I'm going to use those carrots up. If I have more, I was going to uh, ferment some ginger carrots. So if I have any carrots left over, I will also do some ginger carrots. Um, so like I said, I'm trying to get some of this stuff fermented and just have a variety of fermented foods. It's a really great way to preserve. Um, as I start getting more things growing in the garden, I will do more of that as well. And as well as just having, you know, adding that couple tablespoons with every meal for heal, you know, for healing, healing my gut health. So, that is what I'm working on right now. And I will show you this once I get it all processed. So I will get this processed and put in the blender with my maple syrup, salt, cinnamon, 
blend it up, put in jars and with my two tablespoons. I probably have like two cups already of the whey. So, and then I'll just throw that in jars and I will show you what that looks like. All right, see you soon. Okay, welcome back friends. So here we go. So the recipe, I looked it up, it calls for one and a half pounds of apples. So I quick looked at how much I had. I actually have closer to five and a half pounds of apples. So I quick went through and tripled my recipe. So it said one tablespoon away, so I did three. I actually did closer to four, just because I wanna make sure it ferments well. This is my yogurt here, you guys. I wanna show you, see how it's thickening up? If you see how it thickens around the edges here, that's how thick it will get when the whey drips out. And then I just take and I pour, I usually use a funnel, then I just pour the whey into a jar like that and I use it for my recipes. I mean, never throw your whey away. Even if you like boil your rice, throw it in soups. This is just so full of yummy, yummy nutrition here. So anyway, so what I did was, um, this is my, I'm adding the rest of the apples to this because I had to kind of improvise real quick. So I, normally the one and a half pounds of apples makes two jelly jars. So two of the small jars. This is gonna make two of the pint-sized jars, which is awesome, I'm super excited about that. So I poured that in there with the funnel, and then I just take a coffee filter and a binder, and I just do this with that. You can also use a ring, but oh, look at that just ripped because I got it wet. <laughs> Try it, take two. All right. So I'll just double this coffee filter up here. All right. And then I'm just gonna take the binder here and have that like that. I'm gonna leave that on the, leave this on the sh uh, counter, probably in back where it's a little darker. And I'll leave this for about three days. And then I will um, put a plastic lid on it and put it in the fridge, one of the, you know, plastic twist lids. So then I will come back and show you how I make after I finish this and get this one uh, covered, this one covered here. Then I'm gonna show you how I make the apple cider vinegar. So see you soon. I just wanted to show you and let you know how I ended up with more. And mine too is, um, I have, you see the skins in it. I think it makes it a little pretty. I didn't make mine super mush mushy. I have a little little bit tiny baby chunks in there because I eat it and I like it that way. Um, if I was gonna make applesauce for my grandkids, I don't know that I would give them fermented um, yet. That would be up to their parents whether they wanted to start them on fermented foods yet. So if I was to make homemade applesauce for them, I think I would just make regular applesauce and cook it in my Instapot. So, um, yeah, I, I haven't introduced my grandson or my grandkids to fermented foods yet. Um, that's up to, you know, I mean, obviously yogurt. They love yogurt. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of how I'm doing this, and I will see you soon. Okay, welcome back. So I totally lied, look at this. I ended up getting three pint jars and one jelly jar. So I'm going to just set these aside over in my darker cabinet for about three days. Then I will put a regular lid on those and throw them in the fridge. Now, the apple cider vinegar. So now if it was apple season, I had bushels of apples, I would be doing like a big gallon or so jug of that but i just did a small amount didn't want to waste the cores you can stick the cores in the freezer save them that way but i thought i'll just make a small thing of apple cider vinegar now when you make it this apple cider vinegar is good for like recipes or for drinking if you want to add it to your tea things like that using it for salad dressings as such. This is not good for preserving your food. 
which is why I buy this apple cider vinegar with the mother. You want it with the mother. So basically how I do this is I pack these up about three quarters of the way. These are a little bit higher. I'll probably take this one out and put it in my compost. I forgot my sugar. So I use the pure cane sugar. And then you want to use distilled water or purified water. Purified water comes out of my fridge. It's cold. This is room temperature. I usually use this distilled water when I'm... So I'm going to start with about that much. I may need to make a little bit more. Actually, I'll put a little bit more in there because you want the fruit completely covered. And then I'm going to add about half a cup of sugar into this brine without a funnel, Trina. There we go. And then I'm going to take this and just mix it up. Let's use a fork. I'm just going to mix it up till the sugar dissolves. And then when that sugar devolves, dissolves, I'm going to pour it in here. Another thing to jumpstart it, now you can just leave it like this and do it like this, but I like to add about a tablespoon or two of the actual raw unfiltered with the mother to kind of jumpstart it. That's what I like to do until I get my first made. Then I'll just use this, when, you know, a, like a tablespoon of this. So sugar's just about dissolved. Giving you some bell sounds there. And then what we'll do with this is we're going to set this aside for about two weeks. After two weeks, maybe two, three, I'll see how it looks. You can kind of stir it every once in a while to get the air bubbles out or stir it and see. After about two, three weeks, then I'm going to strain out all of the apple bits into another jar. Then I'm going to cover it with, um, cover it and leave it like in a dark cabinet for about another three to four weeks. Because after about two or three weeks, it'll start to smell like apple cider. Delicious. If you want to have apple cider, great. But I want apple cider vinegar. So then I'll put it aside for about three or four weeks in a cupboard. Some people like it super strong and they go ahead and leave it for up to up to four months and then you get that real pungent like pungent like this I like for eating wise or drinking or I like it kind of a sweet apple cider vinegar so I do about four to six weeks you'll know you can smell it when you get that vinegar the way you taste it then I know that mine is ready and that's when I use it so let's go ahead and pour this I think I'm gonna have extra. <laughs> I'm terrible at measuring. But you do wanna leave an inch of headspace. I am gonna pour about, shake this up a little bit, about a tablespoon of this in here just to kind of get it started. And the reason why you wanna leave a little bit of inch of headspace in here is because it will activate and bubble over. So I do keep mine, all of these, I'll keep in kind of like a, and then I just make sure there's no air pockets in here. And then all of these are underneath. I might actually put a weight. I have some weights here. All right, so what I may do is I'll put a weight down here. Oop, and there goes the water. I have to dump a little bit of this out here. All right, okay. And then I'll put a coffee filter. Make sure that this is all under a little bit more water. Okay, it'll be under with the weight. Okay, and then these are the lids that I use after when I put them in the refrigerator, these plastic ones. 
um, with acid stuff, you don't want to put the these ones on because it'll eat right through unless you have like a cheesecloth or something underneath it. Okay, so with the weight, I will then put to this, kind of funny looking with the weight on there, sticking up. And there you have it. So that is how I make my fermented applesauce and apple cider vinegar. Here's my whey, here's my yogurt. This is looking really good. I'll probably put this in a container in about 15 minutes and then do the same thing with the other half. And then I'll stick this in the refrigerator and I will have this for breakfast every morning. So that is how I do some fermented foods. Thank you so much for watching. If you like, like stuff like this uh, and, you're like to, and you're trying to heal yourself, from the inside out as I am and work on that gut health. These fermented foods are wonderful. Uh, let me know. Give me a thumbs up and a like, share, and let me know of other things you like to, to uh, hear about, see about, learn about. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day and be blessed. Bye.